moment as we look at the safe drive presented by NJM Insurance Group. We're going to hear from Jalen Rager, but look at the drive chart. Eagles drives against the Giants today. Punt, that was three and out, then an interception as they got the ball down to the Giants. 20, a three and out, 15 plays and an interception, turned it over on downs, another pick, a touchdown finally, punt, fumble, and downs. I don't think they're going to want to look at this film, but look at it, they must if they want to correct and go back to the Meadowlands and play the Jets. Let's not let's not take the Jets for granted now. How about that? We I don't even ever want to, take a team for granted. I, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> uh, no, I mean us because any in the NFL and certainly with the Philadelphia Eagles. Ray, your thought on what Nick Sirianni said about Jalen Rager as he was asked a follow-up question by Zach Berman, like, why are you pri prioritizing this guy? And his answer was, he's got speed, he's one of the strongest guys, i got to find a way to get him the ball, my job to do it. Well, it's, it seems to me, whether by directive from the front office or um, just his own desire to try and get a number force this guy into the lineup and put the ball in his hands and trying to make something out of him. Um, you know, the fact that Justin Jefferson keeps piling up 100-yard games one after another is probably uh, part of it. It shouldn't be. Uh, look, I never, th I never thought the kid was a first-round draft pick anyway. I mean, when they picked him, I was, my jaw dropped. I had a third round great on him. Um, I, I just didn't think he was that kind of player. I just thought he was uh, maybe a return guy, uh, maybe a slot guy, but I didn't see him as a first round talent. I just didn't. And there was nothing in his college career that kind of suggested that. Um, and the one thing that Sirianni said that he was being honest about was early in the season, he said, we tried to do a lot of different things to get the ball in his hands. And he talked about jet sweeps, and he talked about wide receivers, he talked about smoke screens, and he talked about, you know, little plays around the line of scrimmage. But what they're basically saying is we didn't trust him to be able to run a route. We wanted to get the ball in his hands some ways, either through kick returns or plays at the line of scrimmage. But we didn't really, we didn't really trust him to run a route, get open, and do the things that, traditional things that wide receivers do, guys that you draft in the first round. To this point, he hasn't shown any of that. And now they're trying to incorporate him in the offense down the field, and he's just, he's just not up to the task, Mike. And um, I mean, I don't know what John Hightower can offer you at this point. He hasn't played at all. Uh, but it's clear to me in this situation, and it's funny, Seth pounced on it just as I did. I was looking at the stat sheet when it was handed to us, and the first thing that jumped out at me was seven targets to Jalen Rager. Yeah. I mean, if... If you are targeting Jalen Rager seven times in a game, there's something very wrong with your play calling. Right. Because okay? you have better, you have far better options than him. The, and, and that includes in the draft. And when you look at Jalen Rager at TCU coming out for the, his entire senior season, I don't know what you would think, uh, uh, sorry, a junior season, I don't know what you would think uh, would be a, a good yardage total for a receiver that was to go in the first round. In, in the Big 12, for goodness sakes, but he had 611 receiving yards, <laughs> and the Eagles put it off as well. It was really it was bad, poor, quarterback. It was bad quarterback. Bad quarterback. Bad quarterback. Really which, which I mean, I will say there, there is some truth to that. Yes. I mean, Barrett did a couple of the games. The quarterbacking for yes. TCU that year was pretty bad. Uh, but they try to excuse everything. Uh, his drops and all. They try to blame it all on the quarterback, and it's simply not true. I mean, he is a very, very unpolished receiver, and remains so today. It sure, the does. That, Let's the fact that you got to get so creative that tells you right there that you got a problem. Okay, what happens is just lining up at wide receiver, running a route, beating a defensive back. Okay, running. Look, all the. All the training. I mean, we saw Nick Sirianni with hands-on training on these wide receivers in training camp and OTAs. I mean, like, really hands-on, like, driving them. It seems to me like all of that stuff is just out the window. Seth, that's not even it, though. They do, when you look at Jalen Rigger, you talk about explosiveness. The mere fact they have him on punt return and there's no explosive plays on punt return. That's when you show ex your explosiveness. That's when you show if you're a real athlete or not. That's when you make guys miss when you're down there and, and, and you give them an opportunity to take a whiff at you and you take it to the house. 
those are when you see the big time athletes or you put you in a position like they do in San Fran, like Debo Samuels, give him an opportunity to maybe run a jet sweep, a reverse or maybe a speed screen. He hasn't shown the ability to break any of those plays. So when you keep going to the well, it just to me thinks it makes me think that, all right, we're really trying to legitimize this pick. You this guy being on the team. Barrett, you don't draft a guy 21st overall and then you got to get creative with him. That guy comes with all the skill sets, with all the route running, with everything that you can do. You think all, the only thing Debo Samuels can do is run jet sweeps? No. Debo Samuels will push you up the field, stem you inside, and turn inside and catch the ball. And every time it hits his hands, it's like yeah, glue. Okay? We, we Come got, on, man. We, we, got, we got somebody. <laughs> Come on. It, it ain't nothing that, like that. It ain't that hard. It really ain't that hard. He's not even close to being like that. And just to clarify, Nick Sirianni asked, well, why were you – did you prioritize him? He said, well, I don't know that I was prioritizing him. But the fact of the matter is that he did prioritize him. When you have seven targets you to call the guy, play. that's priority. When he's got more than the other two top receivers combined, that's priority. You call the play, okay? And if you call the play nine times out of ten, guess what? He's in the progression, okay? That means that... Devontae Smith is over here. Dallas Goddard is over here. You're starting your progression with one Jalen Rager, okay? So don't tell me you didn't target him. You, yeah. was, it was clear that that was the game plan. Seth, if you didn't go out and make tackles, they bench you. If I couldn't go out there and block defensive ends, they bench me. Yeah. Where is the benching of a guy that's not going and giving you any production out of the position that he's playing? Or when you try to pick him up, put him on special teams and return, it's just not happening. So Cannot I would admit get that they also. made a mistake. That's right. their problem. Here he is. Speaking of that, here's Jalen Rager post game. On the, um, the last two passes that are in your hands. Um, just two two drops that uh, I would say very uncharacteristic. But you know, just gotta go through the highs and lows and go to the next week and you know make the plays. How do you recover from that personally? Um, just keep going. I mean. You know, I had catches and stuff like that, so I just got to keep going, just not get down on myself. The last, the last one, what, what was kind of going on on that play? And like, you know, it seemed like you got Jalen was running around, you were running around, just kind of describe what happened. Um, it was just a scramble drill, just, you know, him breaking the pocket and, uh, you know, just something we do in practice, just a scramble drill. Conversation like with Jalen after the game, obviously we saw how disappointed you guys were. Um, just keep going. You know, him, the coaches, everybody just told me to keep going. You know, we got each other back. Jalen, do you feel any pressure to live up to being a first-round draft pick? Um, I would say, like, nah, not really. It's just, it just depends on, like, what you're talking about. But when it comes to, like, living up to something, no. Uh, Why was it important for you to, to talk to us after this game? Um, just take ownership. I mean, you know, it, it's not on one person or one, you know, one specific thing, just take ownership for what happened, you know, in that scenario. So next time you're in that situation, I guess uh, in that situation, what would you do differently? Um, I mean, just that's it's. I wouldn't say next time I'm in that scenario, but it's just like I said, it's just a, it's just a, you know, a drop, just like, you know, any receiver could have. So it's it's nothing that I just would say put myself in that position. What about the, the play a couple of plays before? Uh, what happened on that one? Um, it was. It was a good. It was a good pass by Jalen. Uh, I felt like it was kind of he, kind of was on my back. But like I said, it's just the plays that we got to make. So, Were you know, they concentration drops or nah, uh, uh, just just a drop, just drop, drop the pass. Team has been running the ball a lot lately. Uh -huh. You haven't had as many catches or as many opportunities right. like the other receivers. Has your confidence been affected at all? Nah, no, uh, because -uh, I'm. I mean, like I said, every week I'm doing what they ask me to do. You know, whether it's. Uh, on special teams or, you know, whatever whatever the case may be. So it's just whatever get us a win, that's what I'm fine with. How much of a setback is this after the last couple of weeks and then Dallas losing on Thursday giving you an opportunity? Um, man, I just feel like, you know, like Jalen always says, everything's still in front of us. So we still got an opportunity next week. And, I mean, you know, just I would say stay positive and just try to do what we can to get, you know, stack up these wins. You talked about, you know, the lessons you learned last year and sort of staying off social media and right. stuff like that. Will, will you find it hard to not go on social media after this? Nah, uh-uh. Like I said, it's, I mean, you got to take the heat. So it's not really, you know, you got to think it's people. 
it, I would say now I don't hold as much weight to me, so it's fine. Like I said, this was for me to take ownership, so whatever's going to be said is going to be said regardless. So the, offense, the offense has really shifted to be run-oriented over the last month, and that has certainly affected you in terms of targets. How have you been able to kind of keep a positive mental frame of mind? Um, like I said before, just whatever gets us a win, regardless of what I have to do or sacrifice, you know, it's fine with me. Um, just getting going early and finishing in the red zone. So just, you know, things that we can do as a as an offense together and um, you know, just putting ourselves in better spots and, you know, ultimately getting getting the job done. Is there anything you can take to from from uh, your career that can be applied to this situation, uh, knowing how to handle and process it and, and move forward? Um, that's that's what that's what you do. You know anything? That's what you do in life. You know you have bad days. You have a good day. You just got to move forward because you know tomorrow I still got to be here. I still have to go practice. I still have to play next week. So it's you can't too much dwell on it. But like I said, just me taking ownership and then moving forward. Okay, thanks, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Jalen Rager, the Eagles' first round draft pick from last season. I got to say this: uh, 22 years of age. Are some kids still in college at 22 years of age? Uh, most kids aren't making the millions that uh, Jalen Rager is at 22 years of age. So there is that. I always say, are you taking the money? He is, so there's certain expectations that are laid upon him. I thought he handled himself well there, but the bottom line is you catch the ball or you don't catch the ball. He is their first-round pick. He is failing to catch the ball. He's he not great. He well. I, I understand that. I, I, I think that uh, he, he, he stood up to... Barry, this, that, yeah, that, that's not that's, easy to do. That's pressure right there. I mean, and, that's, and, especially, especially in this city. I mean, he's under the, 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 the fire right now. So for him to sit in there, and listen, I, am I critical? Yeah, because I want to see this team do well. And he has to be a major part of that, or they're going to have to figure out a way to move him out of the way and find somebody else to put in there. Okay. I, now, my point was, I thought he was accountable. No, he said uh, all the right things. He said all the right things. He could have said he could have been like missed the point, which we see many athletes in Philadelphia do. Well, it wasn't my fault. I don't know what happened. I mean, I'm there. I'm open. But you know, all, all the other stuff that we have, Ray, you've, you've he's been here long enough he, not to draw the ire. Trust. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and and he, he could have drawn the ire.